real quick, just introduce ourselves, um, uh, name, how long in the business, and I think everybody but one is with Future Home, so then you can just, uh, we'll let her tell where she, who she's with when, when we get around to her. So Jackie, you can start. So you can attack me? Yeah, exactly. What are you thinking? Holy smokes, why are you paying? John Rakowski's a nice guy, but is, is he worth 28 grand? <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, I know, she's on. Yeah, slowly but surely, she'll be on her way. That's okay. We, we know her well enough to give her some grief. So, yeah, no. all right, we'll start then. You can just. Yeah, I'm Kia Anderson, and I've been in real estate since 2005, and I was. Um Remax Realtor. Remax Realtor. And you were at Ruttenberg, right? No, I wasn't. No, you were not. So I thought, I was, okay. I was at Keller. I started at Keller Williams. Gotcha. On oh, the Gary and Nikki team. Yeah, then I went right. to Remax, worked for Matthew Brashear for a year. Um, then I worked for John Dietz for four years. Right. Um, and he, but he was already at Remax. And uh, I stayed at Remax Realtor, yeah. Got it. I didn't know. You know, I, I guess I missed that until I talked to you last time at the, at the Incorporated Seminar. Um, I forgot that. I didn't know that John had gone to Remax. Yeah, John yeah. Hunter Remax, he kind of... Because he was like a team leader and everything, or like even yeah, the region yeah, leader or yeah. something there. Yeah, but he didn't like the competition of the Gary and Nikki team. And gotcha. Team, so, so, hey, come on in. <laughs> so he thought... Are you here for the training? You, yes. You can yeah. grab other chairs and roll them in. Yeah, just roll another one in. There's one in the back. There's one in the back, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. He thought the team concept was better at Remax than it was at Color Remax. Gotcha. Right. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Good, good. Yeah, and plus, he didn't have to directly compete with the same office with exactly. Gary and Nikki when he started to do that. Good deal. Well, you're always welcome. We just tease you. All right. But we would love to have you, too. All right. So, well, I don't want you to think that there's, there's a closed door here. We'd love to have you. All right. Okay. Juan Sanchez. Uh, Juan Sanchez. Ten years uh, as uh, a realtor uh -huh. before he was a mortgage broker. Oh, I, I, I missed that. Second year with the company, my best decision ever to be yeah. in the company. Awesome. Yeah. Good deal. All right. So 10 years and then and you have a mortgage background yes. as well. Perfect. Awesome. Janice Robo. Hi, Janice. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, had my real estate license for 12 years. Yeah. I was with Century 21 before coming. Which office? Oh, I was with a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> I ran the gamut. Okay, yeah. I just, they kept selling them, and I kept going with the, the new one, but the last one I was with was Century 21 Shaw. Shaw. Okay, perfect. Awesome. And two and years ago, I moved over. Two years. All right, see, very good. Couldn't be any happy. All right, awesome. <laughs> That's what we love to hear. Good deal. Jillian. Jillian De Silva. <laughs> I've been with Future Home, I believe, four years going on. Isn't that amazing? Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I've been in the industry for 15 years. See? Home. Big Boston Red Sox fan, big Boston anything fan, exactly. So just uh, if, you, if you want to give her some grief, that, that's okay. Did she the Yankees just signed John Carlos Stanton? Sorry. Gee, many Christmas. It's like the rich get richer. You talk about, hey, hey. Leslie, come on, sit back to your, next to your compadre back there. <laughs> so I put my trouble, trouble students to go in the back, you know, <laughs> my troublemakers. Chevelle, you can come on in if you want. We'll make room or roll one in. You have a chair in, though. All right, so we're on you. Just name, how long in the business, and how long with Future Home? Uh, future Home, the same as her. Yeah, four or five, yeah. 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 Five, I guess. Yeah. I Going on five, something. And I've been in the business since 2005. 2005. And your name is? Leslie Walker. All right, Leslie Walker. Very good. Good to see you, by the way. Margo Bartlett. Hey, Margo. I've been... With Future Home for two months. Awesome. And I've been a real estate agent for two months. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. She, you know, we only go after the best and the brightest. They're the ones who see the light early, right? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Good deal. Perfect. What line of work did you come out of before, Margo? Uh, well, I used to work at a mutual fund company. Okay. And I stayed home mom. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. How old are the kids? Five and seven. Five and seven. Boy, girl. Two girls. Two girls. Awesome. Good. Congratulations. Good deal. All right. We'll go here and then we'll come back. Okay. I thought I'm the winner for the newcomer, but you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've been with the future for about two months. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, got my license for a year. Uh huh. I was with uh, Carlo Williams. Yeah. Which office? Uh, Palm Harbor. Palm Harbor. Okay. Very good. So, You're not alone. There's a lot of those around yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> I feel a lot of support here. Good, good. So I'm very happy with you. And we didn't catch your name. Your name? Audrey Johnson. Audrey Johnson. Very yeah. good. Um, awesome. So compared to all of you, um, my experience for as a realtor is really, really limited. But I have a more than 10 years business background. Awesome. Good deal. I want to introduce you because there's um, an agent who's coming on board. I just interviewed you over in Orlando. Um, 
uh, speaks uh, Herscher's Cantonese uh, Chinese. Okay, very good. That's awesome. Huge. And you represent some investors, I hear, as well, right? Awesome. That's perfect. Um, but you'll have to meet her because she works the Orlando market and has some Chinese, but very interesting story. She's Chinese by, you know, heritage, if you will, but she grew up in Venezuela, uh -huh. all right, because her parents were owned a, a grocery store and business people there. They got out right just in time when there was a lot of turmoil in Venezuela, if you paid attention. Um, but uh, but she speaks, she's fluent in Spanish and uh, Chinese, and it's just going to be a huge asset. And, and I so. speak um, Japanese. Yeah, awesome. Um, Cantonese. Cantonese, which is Mandarin. which? Mandarin as well. Yeah. Nice. Mandarin is my mother. main. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. That's awesome. So, Good for you. Yeah. It's a huge, huge asset. Well, welcome aboard, and we're excited for that. So, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I'm Jakey Johnson. I've been a realtor for 17 years. I've been with Bob for 16 of those years, mm -hmm. and I will not leave him. Today. Exactly. <laughs> My boys always get excited. She got the, pre the Mrs. Johnson's presence came today, Dad. <laughs> the, Joseph's now 15, and she you've been around since Joseph was just a gleam in my eye. Yeah. Exactly. But Bob uh, is absolutely the best broker there is, and you will not find a better human being than him. Well, he see, is there you go. And he he a <laughs> Awesome. She cannot say anything bad in front. Of That's right, exactly. Okay, and it's on. Okay, so let me go and I'll leave the room, and she can tell you the true story. <laughs> that is it. Exactly. That's you know that's uh, Jack. Jackie's been around long enough. When I was living here, not in Nashville, yes. and um, like the first first Christmas party was at our house, right? Yes, and there are about seven of us, right? <laughs> and so she can attest that a Jeanette does exist, and Jeanette used to come to the Christmas parties, right? Yeah. But I tell that she she stopped coming to the Christmas parties. A, when we moved, all right, because it's hard. With everyone say so many nice things. Exactly. She said it was the worst three hours of her life because she had to sit there and smile and say, yeah, he's a great guy, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> And she's like, holy smokes, at the end of three hours, because if, if I have to look these people in the eye and hear how great you are, for, yeah, that, I know, it's the truth, see? That is the truth. Well, see, that is good Good to know. All right, Chevelle, we're up to you. Chevelle, no, she's in the bathroom. She's, she's up there. She's hiding. She's, she's incognito. Four years. Four years. And all with us? I started with the light. Okay, good. And then you saw the light as well. So, all right, perfect. Good deal. Gossip. Good, good deal. And, young lady. Oh, I'm Rosanna. Rosanna. And, uh, What's your last name, Rosanna? Soto King. Soto King. Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah, I, I, uh, I write checks, so I, I, I see names. All right, it's good to put a name and a face together. <laughs> exactly. So, okay, exactly. I know exactly your volume. I'm telling you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, so I uh, worked one year with Keller Williams uh -huh. and uh, one year here. Perfect. So last year. Which KW office? Yeah. Tampa or, uh, or Palm, Palm Harbor as well? Yeah. All right. Yeah. See? Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Awesome. See? Like I said, you'll find many friends here. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. We've got a, we have a recovery group. This is a former Keller Williams agent send me to 12-step program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too funny, too, too good. All right, so I'm excited about this because um, uh, I've, the first two times I've taught it yesterday, it's, it's, if you guys went to it last year, but last year we did it in January, which is cool, but I thought, hey, let's get ahead of the game, right? I don't know if you, I think, you, you guys catch my Monday motivations that I, I, I don't post them, Mara posts them. They're on um, Future Homes Facebook page as well as the 100K Facebook page. Yes. Um, but on Mondays, I think then one of the, I've got one coming out because I record record them like Hey, Bob never changes his shirt. Well, it's because I record like eight in a row, all right? Okay. I, I try and get, like, if I'm going to record, I sit there and I just do like eight or ten of them and then get them all off tomorrow and say, here's the weeks that we're going to do these, right? So, yes, I do change. I do wear different shirts, all right? Just so you're fair warning. Um, the, Monday shirt. This is my Monday shirt. Exactly. He wears the same shirt every Monday. That's right. <laughs> that's it. I was like, well, maybe that's just what he likes to wear for his. That's right. Exactly. See? And he sits in the same spot. <laughs> that for one's wardrobe eliminates a lot of time waste. I'm telling you. Think See? About, like, I, for the major people, right? <clears throat> right? The same black stuff or TV Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, Gary Keller, I think, didn't he? I think it was not just that he would like a mock, a mock turtleneck. And, and, right? Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. So you don't have to worry about it. It's one less thing to think about. The train. That's my 2018 album. That's right. 
<laughs> All right, we're gonna see, we're gonna so get used to it. <laughs> like it or not, here it comes. That's awesome. Um, anyway, so I, I, one of them is, is about, uh, I think the next one I have coming out is start your resolutions now, like get a jump. I decided, hey, I'm gonna do my New Year's resolution on December 1st, so I'm gonna have a month, a month ahead of everybody, right? I'm gonna you know, attack it, so that way when, hey, I've got a weight goal, and instead of, yeah, oh, I gotta lose uh, pounds in January, guess what, it's already lost. Right now, you just got to maintain. So um, don't be afraid to trick yourself. Last thing too, um, you guys always know if you email me, um, take all the notes you want. If you email me and get you the copy of the PowerPoint, mm -hmm. this one's being recorded, so it'll be on FHR University uh, as well. Um, so we'll load that up if you ever want to go back and review it and hear yourself because you'll. Well, the mic is catching it all right now. <laughs> all right, okay, perfect. All right, so business. Okay, first of all, here's the deal. This stuff is pretty simple. All right. Here's the process, all right? It is that simple. Remember our mantra for 100K has become, you know, this is simple, I got this, right? right? Let's not overcomplicate it. You still have your, you got your armband or wristband? Awesome, good deal. All right, we even gave out wristbands that said, this is simple, I got this. So whenever you're stuck, you just gotta remember, hey, this is simple, I got this. Let's not overcomplicate this. I love that we have newer agents in the, in the room, all right? And my goal is to keep them away as much as I can from the older agents, <laughs> right? <laughs> Because <laughs> the older agents want to tell them how tough this business is and buyers are liars and all the, you know, and say, hey, you know what? No, let's let them go with the naivety of this, this works, right? Okay, because it does, right? If you allow it to work, this works. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated, right? And then the other thing we teach too is it's so simple that nothing's changed, right? So if you're looking at all these fresh, new, creative ideas, the reality is if I were going to teach business planning for the year, we were ending 345 BC and heading into 344 BC. You know, you go up, right? And you kind of go down, because it's BC, right? So we're counting backwards, right? So 345 next year would be 344, right? Okay, of course they didn't call it BC because they didn't know what BC was. Before what? Okay, yeah. okay, all right? Because C hadn't come along yet, right? Okay, so there's no way to be, be, be but anyway, I, I digress a little bit, but that's usual for me, right? Um, so anyway, if I were teaching this in three. 45 BC for the upcoming 344 to this group of chariot salesmen, right, in Babylon. Here we go, we're gonna sell more chariots this year, right? I, it'd be the same stuff, right? It really is, it's the exact same stuff because the principles are the principles, right? Success principles haven't changed. And so what we're gonna do is how do we attack that? I wanna help, help you develop a roadmap for your numbers, mm -hmm. all right? And then talk a little bit up at the end about how do we structure that. Okay, fair enough. So that's kind of the 30,000 foot view. Now let's start to dig in a little bit, all right? So you gotta be begin with the end in mind. Here's the other thing. I'm gonna put a formula in place for you. The nice thing about formulas, because I'm, I'm a former high school math teacher who talks very fast, so hang on, all right? I'm a former high school math teacher who loves the numbers, yes. right? This the beauty of numbers is this formula I'm gonna give works no matter what numbers you put in. Right, so the key is you've got to put your numbers in. I'm just giving you an example, right? But if I've got new agents who can't imagine 100 grand a year, right? Then I don't want to blow your mind, right? Put 50 in there, okay? If that's going to be more palatable and reasonable to you. If I've got, you looking to come on in? Chair. Roll a chair and we got room. Okay. Sit on the floor. <laughs> Later arrivers sit in the front of it. That's just like the movies, right? Okay, sorry, too bad. Get to watch a movie like this, all right? Um, uh, but whatever, and if you're, if 100 kids, like, I need 200 grand, right? Okay, 200 grand, so put your numbers in, all right, whatever, the, the nice thing is, is that the formula works, no matter what the numbers are, you just replace, plug and play your numbers. Got it? Okay, fair enough. All that disclosure done, so. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, you, I got lost. Uh, oh, you got lost? I got lost. See, gotta come to the office more often. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, we got to get you up. Where, you see, she just does it. She, I just upload my deals to Paperless Pipeline. I get paid at closing. I send the check into the office. Why come to the office? I get it. That's why we have small offices, all right? Okay, because <laughs> no one comes, and that's okay. Um, all right. So we're, I'm going to just use an example of 100K net, all right? At the end of the day, net, 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 after I pay expenses, after I pay my broker fees, after I pay the da 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 I want to have 100 grand, all right? So to do that, I need to understand expenses, all right? Now, this is going to be a little bit of, uh, for some of us, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, maybe I should do that. Others are like, of course I would do that, right? But here's the thing. Um, a lot of us don't know our numbers, right? 
that you couldn't tell me what your expense ratio is. However, if you're incorporated, all right, then your corporation had to pr produce a corporate tax return. And in that corporate tax return should tell you your net re gross revenue, right, minus the expenses that you handed your accountant to write off, i.e., sign installation and advertising and cell phone bills and all you know board dues and you know all this other kind of stuff right now here's a little broker trick just so you know all right if you're analyzing how much you paid your broker it's not going to be on your tax return right because all you're working from is the net you got after the broker took his split all right there's my just a little subtle reminder don't be afraid to check out all you future home agents the most you're gonna office bills. okay right exactly <laughs> right 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 the, the, the monthly copies and all that kind of stuff right um, so those get written off you're right so anyway so if you look at that you say okay let's say it was X and I look at my expenses that I deducted from X to come up with uh, Z, right? X minus Y is Z, right? Then Y is going to be your expenses. You take Y, divide it into your X, and that's going to be your expense percentage. All right? So, so I, I just threw a number out there of 20%. People say, oh, there's no way I could do it. People that buy Zillow zip codes can't deal with 20%, right? Their, their expense ratio is going to be higher, but that's okay because it still works into their formula, hopefully. Hopefully they're analyzing that. Uh, to, oh, let's start with this, by the way. I always make everybody do this. This is important to do for every business owner. Agreed? Okay, now we all raise our right hand. Right hand. Everybody, Chevelle, all right. You're, I know you're a belligerent and don't like to do what you're told to do, but that's right, raise your right hand. <laughs> I, 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 I totally agree, totally agree. And, hereby admit and hereby admit that I am CEO, that I am CEO of Me Inc. Me. You are, okay, you are running your own business. Everybody understands that, right? <clears throat> you're not working for Future Home Realty. You're working for you under our umbrella, right? And so your business is your responsibility. And because it's your responsibility, you need to treat your business with the respect it deserves. Okay, fair enough? All right. <clears throat> so understanding expenses, I got, and uh, trust me, you're talking to a guy who's a high eye in the DISC profile, right? Married to Jeanette, who's extremely detail-oriented in his CPA, MBA, all that kind of stuff, all right? It's like having Chevelle around all the time, all right? Just very much into the numbers, right? Which is great. And I come from the theory of, hey, you know what? I'll just outsell any bad mistake I make, right? <laughs> all right, all right, if I, oh, yeah, I kind of wasted some money there, but I'll just sell more, right? Okay, well, that's all great, except when you're married to a CPA, MBA, all right? Who says, well, we could have kept more, you bonehead, right? And so how about we analyze this stuff and make sure we're making good business decisions every step along the way, all right? Let me give you an example. We have somebody that used to be on Gary Ubaldini's team, mm -hmm. right, here in the room. So, 19, no, 2000, I was only there for a year, but the 2000, I was, uh, I did my 411s with Gary. Do they still do 411s over yeah. there? Okay, all right, so the 411s, which is kind of like a, I did it like, I think I did it quarterly, like a quarterly mentoring, you know, I would just meet up with him and say, hey, look, how are things going? So I was doing well, but I was working with so many buyers and Gary was a huge listing agent, right? And so I wanted to, hey, look at Gary, what, you know, help me get into the listing side a little bit better, right? Um, and by the way, great guy. I have a lot of respect for Gary. I love, I have a lot of respect for the way they run their business because they are true business people, flat out, all right? So much so, catch this. Here was my first indication. Hey, Gary, I just got this $280,000 listing, right? Which for me was huge. A, a listing was huge, all right? And then a, a $280,000, which was like a million dollar listing back in 2000, right? It was a big, big deal, right? I said, you know what? And I'm going to date myself a little bit because in 2000, we still had print ads, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. We still, like, Harmon Homes and Real Estate Book and, you know, these things ringing a bell, right? These little print ad magazines, you know, that you would go through and people would see them at the... Walgreens pick them up and want to buy a home, right? Instead of looking online, homes but and land, I think homes and land still around. They probably have an online version, I'm sure. But, um, <clears throat> but so I said, hey Gary, you know my seller wants to see this in some advertising. Where would you advertise this? And he said, okay. He said, how much? What's what's the uh, listing price? I said 280. He says, where is it? I said Dunedin. He said, okay. And he pulled out his little notebook, not big notebook actually. Flipped over a couple pages, looked at the spreadsheet, went down, crossed the columns down, looked. Walked to look at his watch. It's like, what does it matter what what time of day it is? I mean, holy smoke, right? So I'm just watching this in awe, right? <clears throat> he goes and says, you know what? I'd go with uh, homes and land. If you're only going to do one, do homes and land. 
I said, okay, but what the heck was that, right? How did you get that? He said, well, what we found that every, in the second quarter of the year, it be in the price range between 250 and 300, that every dollar we spend with, with Harm and Home, or with the Homes and Lands, uh, returns $13.78. Mm -hmm. I said, what? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> All right, <laughs> WTF. All right, what just happened there? I said, how? And he was like, oh, time's up, 411's over. I was like, okay, well, I'll do that. And then I was, I'm walking by their office, right? And all of a sudden, I see their, their advertisements post outside their office door. And I look at the real estate book, and there it was. Here's a, here's a listing, right? And it says, you know, da, da, da. In the very bottom right-hand corner of the picture, 6784-3. Hmm. So I'm listening to the phone in there, right? And all of a sudden, someone calls in on an ad. Oh yeah, that's right, we're happy to get you the information. What's the, what's the advertising code of that listing that you're looking at? 6784 corresponded to the last four digits of the MLS number, okay? Dash three was real estate book. Dash two was Harmon Homes. Dash that, so they track where their volume's coming from like any smart business person would. You think there's a wonder why the My Pillow guy? You ever seen that guy? Yeah. Hi, I'm Doug Lindell. <laughs> Years ago, I couldn't sleep. So you know, okay. You don't want to say, hey, call in and mention this code, Fox Twenty Eight. Okay, mention because they want to know where they're getting the biggest bang for their buck. Because when you call in and give the code, right? They know, hey, look, we got a lot more calls from our radio ads than we did from our TV ads. And the TV ads are a lot more expensive, so let's put more money into our radio ads. I mean, it's, it's just business sense, right? Okay, so how about if we start doing that? How about if we start tracking where our money's going, mm -hmm. seeing what kind of return we're getting for it, and treating our business like a business, all right? Again, from that day forward, I had a ton of respect for Gary Ubaldini, right? I said, man, that guy knows his stuff, and he's treating, and that's pretty good for whatever, he's like a saxophone player, right? I mean, he, I mean he, that's where he, he, they came out of the music industry. He, he played something, and she was like a they dance, dance, in, Vegas. dance in Vegas, right, exactly, right? And so, you know, obviously he had to learn this stuff. It's not like he, you know, and so he just went and said, hey, look, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, right? So I'm encouraging you to be um, cognizant of your numbers. Fair enough, okay? Because uh, they matter. All right, okay, good deal. So whatever your percentage is, and if you don't know, start with a number, and we're gonna talk at the end how we're gonna analyze it quickly. We're not gonna wait till this time next year to say, oh, I was planning on 20%, it's actually 40, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, too late, I skate. I mean, it's, we gotta catch it sooner, right? Let's get it going early. So we're gonna analyze this after the first week and a half, two weeks, a month at the most, right? And see if our numbers are legit. Mm -hmm. Cool? All right, good. <clears throat> um, I'll get to that in a second. All right, so here's pretty simple, all right? Here's the math guy in me, right? Mm -hmm. To get what you need to gross, all right? Whether you understand this formula or not, just put it in, just remember it, okay? <laughs> when my you going to use this, I get that question in my algebra class all the time, I'd say never shut up and do your test, all right? Okay, so here's the deal. Take your, here's the math guy in me trying to explain this to you, okay? Take the reciprocal of your, uh, your expense ratio, i.e. subtract your expense percentage from 100, right? And then divide that into your desired net. In our case, just write, write the formula down. In our case, it's 100K divided by 0.8. And where do I get 0.8? Because that's 100 minus 0.2, right? Are you with me? Yeah. Okay, or one minus 0.2, right? So when you do that, when you divide by a number that's less than one, you get a bigger number, right? And so that tells us that we need to gross 125, all right? Oh, one other side, yesterday I had somebody that was, for, was with, uh, I think, a call banker office. I said, hey, look, the 20% is supposed to include your broker split, so your number is not 20, okay? <laughs> all right, because yeah, your number's 40 before you even decide to pay a MLS bill, all right, okay? So uh, so she's coming on board, all right. So, <laughs> she saw the light quickly. She's like, what, what, what? Okay, all right, well, Jim already got her the package, so we're in good shape. All right, so, but 100 divided by, that tells me, because now let's do, let's reverse engineer this thing, 125, right? 20% of 125 is 25, yeah. right? Take 125 minus 25, and I get to the 100 that I'm supposed to net, all right? So that's why that works, because we've got to work backward from it, okay? Cool enough? All right. 
So everybody okay with the math so far? Because all we're gonna do is reverse engineer this thing. When I say reverse engineer, we're gonna take the end, right? Start with the end, and I'm gonna stay to stay, take the end and say, I want to win 2018, all right? You guys, there's a group that meets in our Newport Ritchie office, and all of them were at the, well, most of them that I taught yesterday in Newport Ritchie office were part of this subgroup. It's like a little subgroup they've created. They're called the Jammers. You guys know Janina Wozniak started, the, started that group, and then there's about probably 15 of them. About eight of them or 10 are really active, and they kind of meet on a monthly basis. They're, that's a mastermind. I'm going to encourage you guys, you know what? We need to have more of those going on, right? Because as big as we are, and we keep getting bigger, right, which is good, but... Um, big can still feel small, all right, if you want it to, and, and it needs to, all right? Big churches have had this problem for years, right? Really cool things that big churches can do because they have resources, mm -hmm. both money and people power, right, to do some really cool stuff. I've attended some really big churches, right? It's awesome. But I've been attending for five years, and I walk through the halls, and someone's, hey, first-time visitor? I'm like, no, oh, no. Okay, you're right. Because, you know, it's not intimate at all, right? Well, I've also attended churches where, like, they knew my middle name, my kids' middle, you know, birth dates, social security numbers, all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> okay, right? They have it all. And so where's the balance in between those two things? I mean, the cool thing about Future Home Realty being as big as we are is we can offer... 35 a month and 250 a deal with a 4,000 cap. I couldn't do that if there were just eight of us. All right, back when there were seven of us, it was cozy, Jackie, but I was paying the electric bill out of my own pocket. I okay, it. I know you did, all right? <laughs> So I got to tell you this quick story. So one of the others that were, was early on, what we call our single digit agents, all right, that were in the first 10, right? Um, Penny Cooper, we said we started to grow and we had our office meetings at the Sweet Tomatoes over on Palm Harbor right, uh, on US 19, all right? Because our office was right behind. So I struck a deal with them. Hey, they don't open till 10, 10, 30 or 11. I said, hey, if we come in at nine, can you make some muffins? I love their blueberry muffins. They're really good. I said, can you make some muffins and put a pot of coffee and we'll pay you so much per head? And here we go, boom. All right, oh yeah, great. So it was a good way for them to get in, all right? So we start having our meetings, all right? One day, we'd grown to about 40 or 50 agents or something, and Penny comes up to me and she said, Bob, <clears throat> they're out of muffins. And I said, oh, Penny, I said, she goes, don't you remember the good old days when we had more muffins than agents? <laughs> I said, they're not the good old days to me. I'm liking more agents than muffins. <laughs> Okay. All right. So I said, well, I'll pay for some more muffins. I'll make sure you, but you stay happy. But I, I like the fact that we're running out of muffins. That's a good sign. Okay. Anyway. Um, so where did I get? Oh, Arcadius Barr. He used to be with us. There's a guy. His name is Arcadius Barr. Last name Barr. Fantastic age. He left because he wanted to start his own company that does property management specifically, right? And he does a fantastic job. Just, you I mean, you know, you can just tell a, a, a go-getter, organized, successful person when you, you just come and look at it, somebody, right? And I just said, that dude's a winner, right? And when he left, he was just very apologetic, right? He just says, hey, look, you know, hey, I just, but I just got to do this because I said, hey, man, blessings to you. But he's part of that Jammer group. And he created a podcast that he shared with them about win the day. All right? I'm going to ask him permission to see if I can post it on our 100K uh, site as well because it is powerful. It is so good. Because um, here's the thing. How are we going to win 2018? Well, in order to win 2018, you got to win Q1, quarter one of 2018. All right? And you got to do that four times. You got to win quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. Right? But in order to win quarter one, let's focus on that now. To win quarter one, you better win January, right? That's great. Okay, now that's okay. Now we're starting to hone it in, right? We're starting to really laser focus. But in order to win January, you darn well better win January one through January seven, right? And in order to win January one through January seven, you better win January one. Thus, his whole concept of win the day. If you win enough days, you will win the week. If you win the week, you will win the month. If you win the month, you'll win the quarter. You win the quarters, you win the year, mm -hmm. right? So we've got to take it and reverse engineer it back down to, okay, here's this big goal, 125,000 I need to I need to gross. What do I do today that's going to lead me to that, right? And that's all we're going to do, okay? Cool. All right. So does that mean on January 1st we can't drink? You can. Well, J December 31st you can, but you better be sober enough when you wake up. Because <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm thinking about one. Hey, Arcadius, that's great. What's that, Jim? It's like noon comes quick. Yeah, noon comes quick. <clears throat> Don't yeah, that's right. Exactly. See? <laughs> oh, that's why I'm a winning one. That's right. See? Because <laughs> you can break down even further. You can say, okay, in order to win January 1, i got to win the hour. Right? Okay? You can really, and in order to win the hour, I better win the minute. Okay? Seriously, you can break it down to its minutest goal, and it reminds you to stay on task. Right? Not to get off, you know, and start drifting, because it's easy to do. Your self-employed is awesome. That's the best part of this business. Okay, the curse of this business is you're self-employed, right? Okay, there's no one cracking a whip saying you have to be here. I always ask people, hey, and we just raised our hand, said I'm CEO of Me Inc., and you have at least one employee, you, right? If you look at you, if you did an annual analysis, let's do your year-end review, would you fire yourself? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? It's a tough question, right? Not a question I like to ask myself, but it's it's what has to be done, right? If we're going to truly exceed and grow, right? So, all right. All that being said, I, this we're going to this is be extremely positive. Trust me. All right. Um, so we're going to gross one twenty five. <clears throat> Fair enough. All right. So now let's do the work. Okay. How do we get your How do we get to the gross? All right. Well. Let's think about it. We're going to refer, okay? My average gross commission is four grand. Okay, again, you put your numbers in there. Might be too low, might be too high. Right now, on let's say somewhere between two and a half to three percent, our average co broke, right? Whatever we're on listing side or, or buy side. <coughs> it's about $160,000 sale price, average sale price. Because I'm not here to tell you, I mean, <clears throat> There's an agent out in our 100K land that joined us. I've never met her. She's, um, you know, but she uh, joined us from a KW in the Wesley Chapel area, and um, she put out this big, hairy, audacious goal. Right? Is that she wants to do 72 transactions this year and 10 million in sales. Right? Well, that's fine. Right? But <clears throat> I know her volume from last year, I, I, and it's. And I'm just saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm the same way, right? Jeanette reigns me in all the time. All right, we're going to have 3,000 agents. Well, we got it, 1,200 now, all right? So, and we've grown, I'm on average, 20% each year. That's great. That's awesome. Okay, but what, ex what in God's name expects you to grow 300%? Oh, because I said it. Right? Okay. Right? Which is, I get it, right? But let's be realistic, right? Okay, so let's, and so what the numbers I'm going to share with you are not unrealistic in my opinion. For anybody, I don't care if you're brand new, all right, or been in the business forever, it doesn't really matter, okay? I think these are totally realistic goals. Again, they might be undervaluing what you want to do. Go for it. I'm, I'm, you know, put your numbers in. But I'm just telling you, I'm not, these are, I'm not going to try and say, well, hey, you can do 125 if you could sell four one and a half million dollar homes, you're in, yeah. all right? Okay, well, okay, that's great. You know, if wishes and butts, and, or wishes and way out butts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas, right? But, very merry. okay, very Merry Christmas. Okay, so I'm just, let's be realistic about our stuff. So don't lie to yourself, that's what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Put in realistic stuff here, all right? So, and then we're gonna track it and measure it and make sure that we're on track consistently. We're not gonna wait till Last year you set goals, right? All of a sudden now, what's today? December what? 14th? 13th. 13th? <clears throat> and if this is the first time you're looking at your goals, since that you set back on January 1, you're screwed. Okay? Oh, this is on tape. You're messed up. All right? Can we edit that, Jim? All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's out there. It's, you can't do anything about it, right? It's too late to make the adjustment. That's why we need to check our progress more often so we can make small tweaks as we need to and not just wait. If we, our goal was to sell 36 homes this year and we check on December 13th and we find out that it's, we've sold four, it's like, okay, I've got, let's see, how many days? 14, 31, 17 days left to sell 32. Go, right? Not gonna happen, right? So let's be realistic and let's check often, all right? <clears throat> How many transactions do we need? 125 gross. Our average commission's four, 31.25. Okay, everybody fair enough? Simple math. Gross divided by the average commission equals transactions needed. Agreed? Okay. Better agree, it's math. <laughs> <laughs> numbers don't lie. I might lie, but numbers don't, all right? <clears throat> 
excuse me, we're going to divide this by 12. Why? We're going we're to monthly, we're going to re reverse engineer this thing, okay? That tells me if I need to do 31.25 transactions this year, I need 2.604. That's probably rounded. I haven't done the math in a while, all right? 2.604 transactions a month, all right? Well, we're all overachievers here, so we're just going to round it up and say we're going to do three, okay? So, 125000 in gross commission dollar seems like a lot to some people, right? Three transactions a month? Reality? Not that hard, okay? Jackie, how many transactions did you do this year? I think you did 42. Nice. Okay. I reached just over 8100000 Nice. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Okay. She works the business like a fiend. Yeah. She does. You have to remember, though, I work from 6, 7 in the morning. That's all right, but you know what? And her clients love her. You talk about giving a liver, her clients would give a liver for her. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kidney? Did you say liver, kidney? Yeah. Would you give me a liver as well? Okay, all right. Very good. <coughs> <coughs> Whatever keeps all right. Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal, all right? It's going to take work. By the way, okay, hey, look, go ahead. This 100K club is what made me achieve this last two years. Mm -hmm. Last year I was at 133,000, mm -hmm. and this year um, I'll be probably close to that, if not a little more. Awesome. But Pretty I good. sell to everyone I see. I talk to people at the gas station. Sure. If, if you're just next to me, I just went and saw my dad, and I was at the hotel having breakfast, yeah. and two men were over there in Tennessee, right. and they were talking about real estate, and then I told them I was a realtor, blah, 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 I handed out my business cards. Yeah. You know, you've got to talk to people. Absolutely. That's just what I mean. That's face-to-face contact, and we're going to break it down in exactly. So, awesome job on the, on the volume. I, I know you've been working hard, and it's well-deserved. Every penny <coughs> is well-deserved. All right, so we're going to do three a month. Oh. Real quick, I was gonna say, you know, if you do about 100, if you net 100 grand after expenses for your business, right? You're in the upper 3% of wage earners in America. It doesn't take you long, okay? Real quickly, let me just take this moment. I'm getting okay, to the side. I'm a member of several committees at the Florida Realtors and all these different things, all right? <clears throat> let me clarify something. The mortgage interest deduction is not going away. Much to NAR's chagrin and me being thrown out of their meetings because they don't like me telling you this, all right, the mortgage interest deduction is not going away, no matter what they say, okay? The, all the tax reform proposals that are on the table, you know what they're doing? They're doubling the standard deduction. NAR is afraid <clears throat> that by doubling the standard deduction, more people are going to choose that rather than take the mortgage interest deduction. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now let me ask you this. Why would somebody choose that, being the, the doubling the standard deduction, as opposed to the mortgage interest deduction? I got an answer for you. Because it's more. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> as so would you. If I could write off eight grand in mortgage interest or I can get a standard deduction that used to be six and now it's 12, I'm going to take the 12. All right? Hello? It's your choice, right? If your mortgage interest is larger than your standard deduction, you're going to still take the more, the more you're going to pay. It's going to pay to still itemize. Well, they're going to cap the, the, here's the thing. The people that itemize have all sorts of charitable giving and all sorts of things that they itemize along with their mortgage interest that exceeds their uh, standard deduction. So those people are still going to use the mortgage interest deduction because it's not going away. It is going to be there. NAR's fear is that people aren't going to buy houses because they can't write off the mortgage interest. No, they can. They're just going to choose not to use the mortgage interest deduction because the standard deduction's higher. All right? Number one. Number two, if I, someone pays $100,000 plus a year in income tax, right, and they get a 5% reduction in their income tax, let's say it's 100, right, and they get a 5% reduction in income tax, all right, they saved. $5,000, right? If someone pays $4,000 a year in income tax, right, and saves 20% in their taxes, they only save 800 bucks, right? Yeah, but they save 20% compared to 5%. They got a way bigger deduction in their taxes than the guy that's paying 100, but what does the Washington Post tell us? 
the rich saved 5,000 and the poor only saved 800. Right? Don't dig deeper into numbers and don't just listen to everything that's been trying to be shoved down your throat. All right? The poor, okay, that paid 4,000. By the way, the true poor pay zero taxes. Right. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> Close to 50% of America pays zero in federal income tax already. Right. They get, they get and they get earned child income credit and all this. Yeah. So they get money back, right? Mm -hmm. So they're, <clears throat> so that, that, so they, yeah. yeah. So don't listen to this whole bilge that's out there about, hey, look, this is unfairly skewed toward the wealthy, mm -hmm. right? It's because the wealthy saved five grand and this guy only saved 800. <laughs> okay, but the wealthy, he paid 95. Right? And they paid 3200 Don't you see that? Is there a despair? Yeah, please, people. But it's an easy sell, right? Because, oh, 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 revolt. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's my quick aside. Here we go. All right. So, and the reason you need to be concerned about this, because I'm going to show you how to make a lot of money. All right? And you want to make a lot of money, you want to say, hey, look, i got to reduce how much I'm paying in taxes. Well, uh, yeah, I got um, yesterday, I was meeting with uh, Mr. Bayer. Yeah? And they told me, no. With those, the new tax reform, there is no incentive to, to buy, say, okay? And what is the incentive to rent? Yeah, exactly. Here's, you know what I love it's to tell people? Negative. Yeah. The, the media. Here's the beauty. You know what a 30-year mortgage, fixed-rate mortgage, is really, that's a lot of risk on the mortgage. You know why? They're geared, uh, here I love to tell buyers all the time. They say, hey, look, even if it was break-even, here's the thing. When's the last time you signed a 30-year lease? And I said, well, never. I say, I know, because anything greater than a year is unenforceable in the state of Florida anyway, right? So they can't do that. So do you think your landlord's going to guarantee your rent is not going to go up for 30 years? No way, right? But guess what your mortgage guy does? Principal and interest is not going to change for 30 years. It's what a fixed rate mortgage is called. Now, taxes and insurance can change. Mm -hmm. I got that, right? But guess what? If taxes and insurance change that greatly, I guarantee your landlord's going to pass that along to you as well. <laughs> right? So if you look at it that way, too, it's like, yeah, here's your incentive. Lock in your payment for the next 30 years. How about that one? Only in America can you do that. That's right. Go with, I like in, in, in Germany, yeah. you get like a five-year or a ten-year lock. I mean, there's right. like 30 years. They have some type of balloon or we're going to revisit this yeah. thing. or there is Yeah, because they're not structured to draw out the bond market, which is what the interest rates are all based on for that long, yeah. right? Okay, and there's not a st stable enough bond market for them to say, yeah, I'm willing to take the risk mm -hmm. on a 30-year note, yeah. right? And so there's all sorts of huge incentives that you can still promote, you know, uh, to that. And plus you say, hey, look, yeah, well, compared to this and this, the mortgage interest deduction still is there, all right? Now, again, we won't know what's going to happen until this all comes out. Right? Well, I'm just <coughs> speculating on what the, um, but I'm just telling you the pro all the proposals that are on the table right now, all right, nothing says the mortgage interest deduction goes away, all right? Again, I'm on committees and they throw me out of those boardrooms, all right? <laughs> it's also why I can never run for office. I can never run, there's way too much YouTube of me out there telling the world that Social Security is a Ponzi scheme, mm -hmm. all right? Okay, and so I can never, especially here in Florida, all right, tell people that, hey, look, you know, you know why they set 62 as your retirement age back in 1934 when they created Social Security? Because the average life expectancy was 61. <laughs> right? But now we're outgrowing, we're outliving our Ponzi scheme, right? We're living longer. We got too healthy. Something's got to give, right? So that we can't start collecting at 62 because there's not enough money going in. It's a Ponzi scheme. They're paying you with the people money's coming in, right? Yeah. So anyway, all right. So, so three a month. We'll be back there. Got it? Done? Got it. All right. Three a month. Okay. So now we've got to figure out what drives our business. Where are we going to get our three? Right? So we're going to take it down. And what am I going to do today? Right? We're headed there. All right? Let's say what we call lead generating slash traffic generating events. All right? Let's say two-thirds of your business comes from that. All right? That could be traffic lead generating events is pumping your gas for Jackie. <laughs> All right? Okay? What? You're pumping your gas. You said you talk to everybody when you're pumping gas. That's a lead generating event for her. Right? All I'm telling you is that I, in 100K, we promote a lot. Open houses. Why? Twofold. You get face to face with people, eyeball to eyeball, we say. Eyeball to eyeball beats pixel to eyeball any day of the week. All right, what does that mean? Think about it. Eyeball to eyeball is better than me having the greatest, flashiest Facebook ad in the world. Okay, 
So here's an example. Talk about being a business owner and checking your business, right? So I have not been home to Nashville since Monday of last week. We did Christmas week, right? And I still am here from that time, which is unique for me. I'm usually home on the weekends, right? <clears throat> well, unfortunately for me, all right, Jeanette and I took a look at some spreadsheets back a couple weeks ago, all right? She said, great, because we have spreadsheets. We have a spread, separate spreadsheet of what, how, our, how our business is doing here in Tampa. We have a separate one for Jacksonville, separate one for Orlando. They all merge into a consolidated. It's all great, okay? Orlando's not looking too good. A little bit. She said, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought we were supposed to have 100 plus agents in Orlando by now. I said, what? I'm like looking around. <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> She goes, how many agents do we have? Because I look at, we're bare, we're like break even, right? And she said, if we're going to do break even, why are we doing it? All right, because that's not even considering all the hours and the travel and the time you're going down there. All right, so it's really not break even. I said, man, you ask tough questions around here, right? So I took a look at it and I said, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I've let the ball drop. We've got 57 agents there, all right? And the spreadsheet says projections were to be there. <laughs> <laughs> me nervous laugh. <laughs> Look at her. And she's just, and she's just staring at me. <clears throat> yeah, well, guess what? Okay. Guess who didn't come home last weekend, right? Because I went Tuesday, right? But this is, I'm telling you, this is the beauty of having her as a partner, right? Tuesday, I was Christmas party. That was fun. I love Christmas party. That was a fun time, right? Okay. Wednesday, I drove over to Orlando. Christmas party, another fun day. Here we go. I can, I can chuck and jive and dance with you all day long. You slap hands. Hey, good to see you, right? Okay, that's me, right? Thursday, moved to drive to Jacksonville. Christmas party. I was like, right on, man. I love my job. Right? <laughs> Here we go. All right, so do the Christmas party in Jacksonville. Then, time to go to work, right? <laughs> drove back down to Orlando, all right? Checked in and come Saturday morning up at 6 a.m. planning my day, doing out and bought uh, my uh, uh, granola bars, a little chewy granola bars, two boxes of those. <clears throat> bought a uh, really, they have really cool Lindor, um, the, the chocolate balls. Oh man, they have Christmas ones. It's a cho dark chocolate with, okay. So I got a couple of those in a mixed bag. They have green and red, red and blue and, and uh, uh, gold, you know what I mean? So I put a couple of those. I found these really cool at Walmart. I found these really cool little Christmas bags, you know, that you put in, right? And then I put a candy cane in there, right? Tied them up, hole punch, my card. And another card says joinfhr.com, right, which we have a lot of those, right, it's to our recruiting website. Went into the MLS, checked and say, where are open houses today? Okay. Found 20 open houses to go to on Saturday, another 20 to go to on Sunday. I only made it to about 14 on Saturday because I had such great conversations. Plus, it was chilly. I usually take, I used to do this. Remember, Jim, we did this back in the day, all right, here in, in Tampa, right? Because what, what was I, what did I know? What do I preach to you? What beats pixel to eyeball? Face to face. Face to face, right? Okay, so I usually brought in a cold bottle of water, which I did have bottles of water, but it was like 58, all right? And 58, I mean, trust me, these agents were breaking out their Uggs. I mean, you thought, okay, you know, you thought, here we go. Exactly, man, they got knit caps on, and that's not just because they were millennial. Millennials wear a knit cap when it's 87, but, all right. Um, maybe are you millennial? That's true, don't they? All right, they say that, okay. All right. Anyway, so um, I go rolling in. So I went and got a box of Joe, a, a big box of coffee at, at uh, Dunkin' Donuts with all the setup and everything. So here I come rolling in with my little goodie bag. I got a bag of condiments with, you know, sugars and creams and everything else in a cup. And I go roll in my box of Joe. All right. Set it on the counter. How you doing? And all right. Fred Astaire arrived. Yeah, that's right. Now it's time to get on, right? Now it's time to dance. But seriously, you know what? People, they're shocked, right? You walk in because now, I know brokers ever done this. And that, that, had great conversations. Six out of those two days, because I'm leaving after today. I'm doing this in Seminole. And then tomorrow I'm doing these two, one in my Winter Park office and one in Dr. Phillips. I've got six non-future home agents that I met over the weekend that are coming to our training. All right, there. Okay. Why? Because face-to-face -face works, right? I'm like, yeah I, yeah, I probably got an email from you. I delete those. I get it. I delete them too, right? Because all the emails in the world, I mean, it's just, um, if I get, you know, we get a half a 1% response, it's like, hey, we did a great job, right? But face-to-face, -face, all right? 
It's a lot better, right? So here I was getting that done and, and knocking it out. So I'm just gonna encourage you, all right, whatever it takes to drive your business, and my, you know, it's whatever it takes to drive my business, you have to do. You've gotta put in the work. You can't cheat the system. We're gonna talk about that at the end. All right, so let's say lead generating events generate 67% of my stuff, all right? Meaning open houses, whatever those might look like, all right? Well, again, we need three. 67% of three is two, all right? The other 33% is gonna come from what we call um, an, uh, an introduction, all right? That's Michael Mayer's fancy word for a referral, all right? But we're not supposed to say the word referral, so we say introduction, right? Because referral implies that I'm asking for it all the time, right? And when you start asking for referrals too much, you know what you really have? Commission breath, mm. all right? And people can smile it from about 15 feet out, right? And they can, I've learned they can even they can smell it from over the phone, <laughs> all right? You know what a bonus is? <clears throat> A bonus is once you reach this goal, you pick and choose your client. There you go. Yeah. If there's a client that's not nice, yep. I tell them, you know what? I just did it. Yep. I got rid of a sale, a listing, yeah. yep. and a sale because mm -hmm. I said, please find another realtor. Right. I'm not the one for you. Right. Life's too short. Yeah. All right. Life's too short to deal with people like you. Jackie, yeah, next time refer it out and get a referral. Yeah, right. Exactly. Refer it to somebody you don't like. You don't want to shoot your head in the <laughs> What's that? She didn't want to get refer to her. Uh, yeah, right, right, because it would be a, it, it reflects on her, right? Yeah, I get that too. She's nasty. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> Why? I thought we had a terrible transaction last time. Why are you referring me business? And you're about to find out. <laughs> um, yes. Last week. Yep, we got a story here. Last week we went to um, Mike Ferry's. Oh yeah, how'd that go? You know, different from what it's, you sure, right. But I was so turned off because every word out of this guy's mouth. Mm -hmm. when, you when you buy our system, phone. when you buy our system, and or make phone calls, he said. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Let it ring. Smile and dial. Yeah. And then the la on that, so that's Monday. Let it ring three times. If they don't answer, hang up. Don't leave a message. Right. And call back later. Okay. But the whole thing of it was is they were begging, begging. Who do you know that might buy or sell? And I'm telling you, every single. Even if it was your past client. Right. Not like you said. Right. I said, oh, avoid them. Just chit chat. Right. You know, get. It's the truth, though. He no. didn't want to develop no. a relationship. Now, are we doing business or not? Business. Hey, how's it going? Are we doing business or not? I could not do it. E. And then on What's that? Friday, I got a way approach. It's like. Well, it is. That's bold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trust me. When you know when bold has assigned them to call the medical profession, because um. if you know any doctors, all right, they're like, what's going on, man? I got 15 phone calls from these same agents. Right, these different agents telling me, hey, look, they're doctors. Oh, yeah, it's doctor day at Bold. Yeah. Is it okay? <laughs> right, because now they're saying, here's where we're going to call. Right. Again, come to 100K if you haven't been because we're going to teach you something totally different. Oh, because you know why you don't want to do that? Because you wouldn't want it done to you, right? That's exactly what I kept saying. I mean, and then on Thursday was the last day, yeah. Friday morning, I get two phone calls from from people that want to coach me. Right. I said, no, nah, I'm busy. Yeah. Well, I'm getting ready to run out the door. And she said, this is going to take 20 seconds. And she just kept talking and talking. I said, listen, I got to go. Yeah. It's she said, I'll call you after Christmas. I said, mm, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I celebrate Christmas all year long. So yeah, you know I what? Mean, call me after Christmas because there never is an after Christmas. It was, it was obnoxiously a turn off. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know what? And I, that's why I'd never, I would never do it. All right, and that's why when I do these traffic generating events, like an open house, now I'm, you know what? Yeah. Am I asking them for business? No, I'm relieving them from a pain, right? Whatever that might be, they need me. That's what the whole my whole attitude when they come walking up that driveway. Like, remember that my whole thing is they have no idea how lucky they are. They yeah. <laughs> are. It's a lucky day, man. Fate yeah. twisted yeah. in their fate. You know, did it, it is? They get a chance to meet me. Right? It's the truth, though. And I reversed it when I was walking up to these open houses, right? I say, they have no idea. They get a box of coffee and get a chance to meet me? Holy smokes. I was telling Kyle, I was telling Kyle, I was telling my daughter Kyle about this every morning. Mm -hmm. She calls me every morning on yeah. her way to work. And she said, Rover Bob would never do that. See, she, she knows all right. And she lives in Texas. It's not even a realtor. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. Okay, but it's so true though, because we're not going to do that. When I say this introductions, okay, because we're not going to call people and the last thing in our mouth, hey, by the way, you anybody here looking to buy or sell real estate? The next six months, really pretty sure they're <laughs> Right? Don't do that. Yeah, I know, exactly. I start getting hives, right? Exactly. So we don't want to do that, right? We want to just, you know what, those introductions are going to come from? 
You'll be driving by, you're gonna see a billboard for a karate school, and you're gonna, oh, you know my friend that was at, you know, Susan, her son's taking jujitsu. That just reminded me of Susan. Such a reason. Hey, Susan, just thinking about you, just wanted to check in. I just drove by this billboard and had a karate. How's Johnny's jujitsu going? That's it. Right? Oh, it's going great. That, 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 that. Oh, perfect. And then once you read the book, you sit there and uh, Michael Mayer's book, you start to say at the end, so you start to develop in, hey, you know, anything, what's going on in your life? Anything I can help you with? You know, I, I tend to have a lot of contacts. Right, being in real estate, I got a lot of you know anything I could help you with. I mean, in, you know, well, you know what? We just I don't. It could be anything, right? I need a good chiropractor. I need a whatever. You go help them. You go give massive value first, mm -hmm. right? And they reciprocate it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Unknowingly, yeah. not because you asked for it. It's just because you were good. You did the next right thing, and good things come back to you. It's a much better way to live, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Rather than get up, oh, I got to do forty-five calls today so before ten a.m. You know, right? You're like, holy smokes, man, you know what? I hated that cubicle job, but maybe it's not so bad, right? I mean, are you with me? I mean, I've been there, right? And so, hey, look, why do that, right? right. So, yeah, because now I have, we, have, we have people, because we have people, a list right? of uh, tradesmen or whatever yeah. you call them, that people like call Yeah, they know you. They're go-to person. Yeah, and they call and ask my ex-clients, you know, my clients that I've sold to. Cool sneaks, by the way. Those are yeah. dead. I'm digging those. All right. <laughs> they uh, they call you for you know like one girl she said that her toilet needed to be switched out so you get all those phone calls too yeah guess what and you know what the next phone call is three months from exactly. now hey my daughter's friend is moving here from exactly. so and so exactly I'm just telling you that's the way it works yeah. all right remember I told you to no different than chariot salesman right okay here's the secret are you ready here's the secret of sales <clears throat> gonna whisper it because we don't want everybody to know okay. <laughs> <laughs> do what you do well and let other people tell. Yeah. Period. Okay? <laughs> All right? Seriously, that's it. Okay? I would drive this, but it's, I kind of wouldn't have the same effect. All right? This is the actual mic. <laughs> yeah. What's the clicker? It's a clicker drop. Okay? <laughs> no, not a mic drop. I'm killing Jim. Look, he's good. Jim, I'm, I've rolled Jim in and right into reading glasses now. I'm telling you, he's getting old before his... <laughs> dark. <laughs> Sure, dark, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, exactly. See, I know. Do what you do well and let other people tell. That's it, right? You don't ask them to tell. They just tell because you did it well, right? It's just, it's just and you don't tell them to tell. They just tell because they like what you did well. I'm Dr. Seuss. You can go, okay, I got things rolling, man. Okay, there's a tooth gush on my toothbrush. <laughs> Love that book. What is it? Take me back. Joseph just turned 15, man. I said, I got to go back and read those books, man. I was up at 5 a.m. He was at an early riser, man. We just read and read and read. It's awesome. All right, so, yeah. Uh, that, uh, one, I tried to remember the book that I read. Uh, Seven Levels. Seven uh, Levels. That one? I say, then, say, say it's, it is like... You eat what you like. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Um, and about those phone calls, they say never join the NFL. Oh yeah, that's uh, Seven Levels Communication. The NFL is a no friends left. No friends left. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that is from Michael Mayer, yeah, Seven yeah. Levels. Right, exactly. Because you start calling people and every time you call, you have commission breath, mm -hmm. they stop answering. Mm -hmm. right. oh, hey. that one book about the guy um, who had to get the vase? Oh, that's the go-getter. The go-getter. Yeah, that's a I'll good one. I'll tell you what, I read that yeah. book about three or four times a year. That's a good it's one. It's the best book you're ever going to read. Peter B. Kynes, K-Y-N-E-S, is the yeah. author. And you can read it in an hour and a half. Yeah, what's it? What's it? the go-getter. Go in fact, we early on in our 100Ks, we used to give out a blue vase. I still have. Is that blue vase around? Yeah. Yeah. Here we, <laughs> we, got, we have a blue vase we used to give out. Um, to, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, who was uh, K-Y-N-E-S is the last name. Yeah. Peter is his first name. Yeah. K-Y-N-E-S. Great book. I think you can download it for free, like an auto, audio version. It's so old. Seriously, you can get it for nothing. Like less than 99 it's a cents. Thin book. Yeah, it's easy to read. It's really, yeah. It's kind of weird language because it's written kind of, and yeah. there's some, but yeah, if you have to get, it's not, it's, it's, it's English, but it's just like, it's like, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you think. <laughs> exactly. It looks like English words. Yeah, the Fred Factor. The Fred Factor. Yeah. That is Fred another. Factor. Yeah, that's a good one as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I know we're rolling, we got to roll. So, okay, good job. All right, so remember, two thirds is coming from, now again, you might be reversed. 
right? You might be in a position in your career where a third is only going to come from new business and two thirds is coming from introductions from old, but whatever. And you know what? Or you might have more areas that you get business from, right? You might be divided up into five. And it might be 10% from this, 37.6% from that. How would I know 30? How did Gary Ubaldini know that, you know, $38.14 return? Okay, because you tracked it, right? And so you know all these numbers where this business is coming from, all right? So in ours, if every month I need to, I need to meet two transactions through lead generating events, in our example. Remember, we want three total. So two thirds of three is two, right? Made my math real easy for you, all right? Okay. Um, I loaded this one, okay, because I made it up myself. So, uh, <laughs> two transactions through lead generating events, all right? Everybody got that? Okay, so far, makes sense? Yes. And then I need, I need to get introduced or referred by one of my past clients or friends or whatever to one transaction. And I look at, here's where I clarified it, and this is when we get into this discussion, right? We just jumped into it early, all right? To have one new transaction for someone that I have earned the right to be introduced. Right? Not because I asked for the referral, but because I had helped them get a new toilet three months ago, mm -hmm. right? And now it's all coming back to me. You're just kidding me. Yep, I know. See, it's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. You go do the next right thing, and then it just, the next right thing comes back, all right? Just the way it works, okay? Now, let's do the work. I track and I say every bank owned open house. Now again, why do I say bank owned open houses? This is going back to our 100K, because we teach open houses. Two reasons why I teach open houses. Face to face, and number two, free. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. Here's the thing, you want return on investment? All right, here's the math boggler for you. <clears throat> if I get a dollar, but spend zero, okay? Somebody in their calculator, one divided by zero, help me out please. You're going to get an error or you're going to get an infinity, all right? Because your return, when you invest zero and you get anything in return, your return is infinite, right? Mm -hmm. So the lower your expense and the greater your return is your greater return on investment, right? That's huge. Bigger numerator, smaller denominator. That's what we're looking for, right? And so when we do that, okay, you can get it. So that's why I love open houses so much because they don't cost you anything to do. Right? Other thing but time. Oh, Bob, I'm busy. If you only knew. Yeah, you know what? Let me follow you. Let Jeanette follow you around. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. You think you've got your excuses fly? All right. You might have other thoughts after she gets done with you. All right. There you go. <laughs> All right. So every bank owned open house, half a qualified buyer. All right. What does that mean? It seems like every time I do two, I get one. All right, that's what I'm saying. For me, it was one-on-one, -on -one, all right? I discovered this early in my career. Every time I did a bank-owned open house, I, I didn't say I got one, I averaged one. What does that mean? I might do three, zero. Guess what I did? I showed up for number four. And when I showed up for number four, all of a sudden I got four that day. Boop, back on track, averaging one per thing, yeah. right? Nobody else does. It's the old mining for gold story, right? I know there's a gold vein in here somewhere, so you're picking and picking and picking and picking. 18 months, 24 months, 36 months, I'm done, I'm out, okay? I come along, pick gold, <laughs> right? You did all the work, I just got to do the pick, and I just finished, right? Those who finish are the winners, right? If you know there's gold there, keep digging, right? That's all we gotta do. So whatever your numbers are, so let's again, we're reverse engineering this. If I know I get half a buyer, which is a lead generating event, traffic generating event from every open house I sit, and I need two, I need to do four open houses this month. Hello, that hard? Compared to what, all right? I know it's cool right now, so that's, it might be easier, all right? But if you think you've got it that tough in real estate, go in July and watch somebody roofing. All right, and tell me how, what a big flipping deal it is because the house didn't appraise. All right, figure it out. All right, just go be the rescue person and thank God that there's problems in a real estate transaction because if there wasn't problems in a real estate transaction, they wouldn't need you. It's true, right? right yeah. Okay, so when problems come along, goodness, wow, finally I get a chance to prove my worth, mm -hmm. right? Because quite frankly, whether you want to believe it or not, 6% of 200,000 is a lot of jack. 
All right? You don't think it is? Sell your own house. Now you're like, oh, I, why, can I list it on my own? Can I be for sale by owner? So you're a realtor. I don't want to pay that commission, but you want to collect them, don't you? All right? So I get it, all right? But remember what it's like to be on the other side, right? A lot of times, especially if they're selling within the first two or three years, sometimes that 6% that you're wanting to separate them from is the net sum total of their entire equity, equity yeah. in the home, all right? And you're asking them just, oh, separate it from me just because I passed a test, <laughs> <laughs> right? No, what are you gonna get? You got a value, you know, where's your value proposition? What are you bringing to the table, you know? Why should I hire you? Okay. Questions you would ask, all right? But you don't like to get asked. I get it, yeah. all right? Okay, all right. So we need to do four. Everybody good with that? Okay. Again, your numbers might be different. Every time I personally speak to 15 people that already know, like, and trust me, right? Mm -hmm. They already know, like, and trust me, and I don't end every sentence with, by the way, you look at me to sell real estate. By the way, you look at me to sell real estate. By the way, you look at me to sell real estate. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't do that. You just sit there and say, hey, how's it going? I thought about you because I saw the karate sign, right? How's it going? Boom. Every time I do 50, I don't know, your numbers might be 20, yours might be seven. All right? Whatever it is, it's going to tell you how many you need to do to get your one. Right? And so what does that mean? All right? I just get to do it. Okay. But every time I do that, I get one qualified transaction from somebody introduced to me. Guess what? Two from the open houses, one from there. What did I just do? Three for the month. What's my goal? Three for the month. Because when I do that, all right? I just talked to 15 people. I then get three transactions per month, which leads to 36 sales instead of 31.25, because remember, we, uh, we rounded up from 2.604, right? And now we're at grossing even more. Our goal is to gross 125. We end up grossing 144, and that leads us to 115.2 net if I was on that 20 to 80 ratio of expenses. Guess what? You want to you net more? All right? Reduce your expenses, right? Make that 10%, make that 20%, 10% all of a sudden, you know? Again, tracking your numbers, right? It's really that simple, guys. I'm not here to tell you anything that's earth shattering, right? It just makes sense when the numbers line up, okay? But here's the next part, okay? Got to finish the process. Plans are great, aren't they? You had plans last year, <laughs> all right? And the year before, and the year before, and the year before, right? Plans are awesome. You got to start with the plan, all right? But you got to implement. You got to do something. Those of you who are newer, you haven't been around us on January 1 yet, but first meeting of the year is going to be January 2nd. So if you come to the January 2nd meeting, I'm going to greet you with a happy do year. All right? Not Happy New Year, because this is the year of do. And every year is the year of do, by the way. It hasn't changed from last year. Okay? All right? Because <laughs> okay. for some of us, though, the decision's made, so this is the first do year, right? Okay? We've told you about it for a long time, but now this is Happy Do Year, because we're going to do something. We're not just going to learn, and then learn, and then learn, and never do, and never do. We're going to actually do. So happy do year means we're going to implement, okay? But then what we're going to do after we implement, we've got to be accountable to that implementation because without it, you won't do it, period, right? Got to have a group. Oh, Chevelle's a jammer. I, did, we, oh, you, did I t talk about jammers with you in the room? I forgot. Okay, yeah, Chevelle, you usually weren't there yesterday, so I forgot that you were a jammer. She, Chevelle's a jammer. She's part of that Arcadius, Janina, and gets tied into that uh, Arcadius stuff. Good stuff, all right? Have an accountability group. That group is awesome. Would you agree, Chevelle? Absolutely. All right. They are small and intimate. They're a small group within the big church, right? They're the small group that meets once every month, all right? And they know each other's. I mean, they cover for each other all the time. People, can you open up a house for me and all this kind of... The things you like about a cozy office. Mm -hmm. Trust me, before we even started having our uh, meetings over where the muffins were, all right? We had, I had this older lady that joined us from a smaller firm, and we were like 22 agents, right? And she came in and said, Bob, I think I'm going to go back to my company. I said, oh, man, Doris, you know, I, I'm sorry to hear that, but I totally understand. You know, you're, you're independent con... You mind asking me? She goes, yeah, you know... We're just too big. 22. I said, well, I said, I'm trying to hide my spreadsheet of what, I, what my goals were. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, how about 2,200? All right. <laughs> um, 
I said, I, I can appreciate. She goes, you know, my old office, there's like three or four of us, and we met every Monday morning. We'd sit around the coffee pot and talk about how our open houses went, that, 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 that. And you know, she said, I don't feel that intimacy here and all that kind of stuff because people are spread out and not doing you know, it. I said, hey, fair enough. You know, I, I totally get that. I said, I'll be honest with you. I said, with four or five, you know, I can't afford to offer the model that I do, you know, and so I get it. And, and so, but right away when she left, right, I thought, you know what, how do I offer that? And that's when I got to, I knew mega churches had gone through this, right? And I said, what did they do? They had, so I tried to create as many masterminds whether I could, right? Ideas to rally around, whether it be some type of common bond or doesn't matter, just it could be, the bond could be geography. Hey, we all live within two miles of the West Chase office. Or it could be, hey, we all represent investors. Or hey, we're all Spanish speaking. Or hey, we're all... Uh, Speak Japanese, Mand- uh, Mandarin, uh, Cantonese, um, what else? English, uh, what else? Can you keep going? Spanish. Spanish as well. All right. All of it, right? You were just, you know, a multilingual, whatever the rallying point is, right? Or it could be individual groups for each of those, and she could go to all of them. <laughs> okay. I can go to the Japanese group. I can go to the Mandarin group. I can go to the Cantonese group. I remember all these groups, right? But whatever it is, I, I encourage you to have those accountabilities, right? Because they've all set their goals, right? You're in the process of setting goals. Jammers are, right? For each other and, and, and or for themselves, but they're putting it out there to the group and so on and so forth. So accountability is critical, right? And so I highly encourage you to make sure you're digging in and doing that, all right? Then, got to monitor our progress consistently. Now, those of you who've been around me long enough, you have seen a trip to the moon more times than you ever want to see a trip to the moon, all right? Okay? But I'm going to go fast forward to the next slide, then I'm going to come back to this. So I'm going to, because, okay? So trip to the moon is this. All we mean when you hear this phrase is that here's our perception of a trip to the moon. Looks like somebody shot a rocket, it escaped Earth's gravity, landed on the moon. There's a lot more to it than that. We all know that, all right? But the reality is <clears throat> they don't, thrust their way to the moon. Right? There's not enough fuel. They can't carry enough fuel. So what they do is they escape Earth's gravity, point in the right direction, one thrust, whoop, and then they coast because there is no friction in space, right? Mm-hmm. It's a vacuum. And so they just shoot in the right direction. They keep making sure they're on track. They get close enough to the moon. Then they start to slow down enough because then they want the moon's gravity to start pulling them around and they start falling around the moon, falling around another object is called orbiting. All right, okay, so they orbit and they slow down even more and then they actually fall slash land on the moon. All right, cool, great idea, okay. Glad somebody figured it out and I wasn't the first one to try, all right, so I'm glad. But here's the thing, the reality is, we think it's just a nice easy trip. Here's the reality, check out that box. You see that box on the path? The bigger box is a blown up 10,000 time, you know, shot of a five second portion of that trip. They are checking their progress always. They've got to make small, because if they get too far off, they ain't getting back, right? And they make a movie about it, probably make millions, right? Or let's say there's, and there's some guy they're doing drifting off. All right, okay, yeah. All right, so what I'm telling you though is that you've got to check your progress. You can't set your goal on January 1 and check it on December 13th. It doesn't apply, it doesn't work, right? We call, based upon the Seven Levels book, all right, I've, call, I've taught it for years. Michael put a name to it. He calls it the Sunday Night Ritual, right? Where every Sunday night we sit down and we analyze our previous week. Because you know what Michael knew when he wrote the Seven Levels of Communication? That in order to win the year, you better win the quarter. In order to win the quarter, you better win the month. In order to win the month, you better have won the week, right? In order to win the week, you better win each day, right? So that's exactly what we do. We just analyze. Okay, hey, I said I was going to have my four open houses this month. Right now, I didn't have one this week. And that means I'm supposed to do one this week because I'm going to do four a month. So I better do two next week. Mm-hmm. Right? Catch it early. Easy. Hey, no problem. Saturday, Sunday. Right? Wait till June 30th. I've done no open houses. Right? And I was supposed to have done 24 by now. I got some catching up to do. Right? So the reality is, do we catch it early enough? And by doing it, by doing this, we can. All right. So whenever you hear trip to the moon, that's what we're talking about. All right. Then after we analyze our progress, we make the necessary adjustments. We don't just find out we're off and say, oh yeah, we're off. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Sucks to be me. All right. Okay. So no, we're gonna make adjustments, right? So we make the necessary adjustments small because we caught them early, and we make those adjustments. And then when you, I used to say that bullet point one plus two plus three equals this equals this experience success unknown to the masses. 
but the reality is it's really multiplication, right? Because when you start to stack these things on top of them, each other, the results are exponential, right? Would you rather have three plus three or three times three? There you go. All right. Thank you very much. All right. You guys, when am I ever going to use math again? You didn't, didn't know what you're walking into, I did you? Okay. Math. That's right. Exactly. I they told me I can miss all those questions on the test and still pass the exam. <laughs> All right, but you will. I'm telling you, this is the differentiator. If you did those things, I'm telling you, do you know what your competition is for, for success in the real estate business? Non-existent. Do you know the people, you know, so much of the business is done by, by so little percentage of the, of the workforce in the real estate business. It's just by which, which percentage do I want to be? Do I want to be the 90% that does 10% of the business or do I want to be the 10% that does 90% of the business? I choose to be the 10, right, that does the 90. Why not? If we're going to do it, let's do it, right? If we're going to have Orlando offices, let's get it done. Okay, that's ringing in my head right now, all right? Okay, if we're going to get it, let's do it, right? If not, can get out. Quit paying leases, right? Okay, let's make this, you know, quit being a drain on us, all right? So, you can't cheat the process, though, right? 100K, we started showing the little uh, six-minute version of the little red hen. You guys remember the little red hen? Talk about tooth gush on my toothbrush, right? Love the little red hen story. You read it lately? Yeah. All right, you read it to your kids, all right? Who will help me till the soil? Not I mooed the cow. Not I quacked the duck. Not I meowed the cat, <laughs> right? Remember all that? Do you remember the book? Yeah. Do you know what they were teaching us? So you can't cheat the process, right? We've got away from this. We all want the bread. So did the duck, so did the hen, so, not the hen, so did the duck, so did the cow, so did the dog, so did everybody else, right? They wanted the bread without the work, mm -hmm. okay? It doesn't work that way, yeah. right? We, another way we call it in our 100 case, we call it the law of the harvest, <coughs> okay? You cannot reap if you do not sow, period. You can try and cheat it all you want. You can pretend, hey, look, you know, you know what? It ain't gonna happen. Right? Because at the end, remember, the little red hen goes through the process. She tilled the soil. She planted the seed. She watered it. She fertilized it. She watched it grow. She weeded it. After she weeded it, she put, uh, uh, harvested the wheat. She ground the wheat. She baked the flour. Da, 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 da. She added, and then out came the bread. Now look who came around. Who will eat me? help me eat the bread? I will, bark the dog, right, okay? And in 100K, we joke around that here come my relatives, right, okay? <laughs> oh, my relatives coming out of the woodwork. I smell bread, right, okay? And I said, yeah, have a great day, all right? Because we talk about 100K, don't we? The difference between family and relatives? I'll tell you my family, Jeanette, Joseph, Samuel, and Trixie. Trixie's our dog, okay? All right. Yeah, exactly, okay, all right? That's who I'm responsible for, all right? Trust me, I don't know how they do it, but it smells, man. Success starts to, I don't know, I keep telling them my tax returns are, you know, locked up someplace tight, but I, somehow my relatives got a hold of them, all right? <laughs> hey, Bob, I don't know what the hell. Oh. You're talking to the wrong man. <laughs> try. Sorry to hear that. Have a garage sale. Yeah. yeah. You know, people all the time. So I live in Nashville, right? <clears throat> live in Nashville. Don't have a business up there, right? People are like, so wait, wait, wait. So your business is in Florida. I said, yeah, it's like I take a bus to work every day, right? It's, it's like Southwest Airlines. It's like a bus, right? Okay, so it's just, right? It's all it is, right? Now it's just boom, boom, right? And so, yeah, it's, I know people, and I come from Southern California. I know people that commute a lot longer than an hour and a half to work each day, and I just fly to work for an hour and a half, right? So, okay, same thing, right? And I just stay there for a couple days, and I'm out. Longer if Orlando's not built, but then, all right, okay. <laughs> so um, here I am. Oh, that being said, um, they're like, so I don't, so you're, so why'd you move here? I said, well, we like the area. We wanted to change the seasons. We, you know, great schools and everything. So, but, so the, was family involved in the, in the decision? I said, oh, yeah. And they said, oh, yeah. So you have family here? I said, oh, no. All right, but that's the reason why we live here, because I don't have family here. All right, okay. All right, it's exactly why I'm here. All right? I have nobody within about a 700-mile radius of me. All right, okay. And trust me, with the phone calls I get, they can't afford to get here, all right? So it's perfect, okay? 
<laughs> so it's a beautiful thing. It's a well, you know, and this is all I'm recording. So if they ever watch this, and, and by the way, it's just, all this, we hide it on FHR University, but our servers are really YouTube. So I'm sure my family, they stopped calling. So I bet you they found me somewhere. <laughs> he said, what about me? He's talking, that's me he's talking about. All right, well, you know, the shoe fits. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, anyway, so just be prepared, right? Because success, when you start to have success, then people start to come around. All right, and you can have drains on your resources, and you got to be cognizant of who you're truly responsible for. Right, your first level of responsibility is your what I call family. Right, there's a difference in family and relatives. All right, in my humble opinion, I get it. People's different cultures, they, uh, that doesn't apply. To, I get it. All right, I'm with you. All right, I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm just telling you the way I've learned to think. All right, that that's there. Cool. All right. Any questions about any of this? Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's pretty simple, right? Really, if you start to break it down, all right, now the key is, all right, step we've just done, that's bullet point one, right, okay? Now comes the work, all right? All we've done is say, I plan on having bread. That's all we've done here today. Now it's time, we've got to dig down and say, okay, what's that going to look like? How's the field? What is the process? What do I need to do? How much grain am I going to need? And if I need that much grain, that tells me how much field I need to, sow, to till. Right? We've got to reverse engineer the bread. And that's all we're here to do. Cool? Questions? And we are here to help. I'm going to continue. This is the year of I'm going to continue to push you guys. That jammer group has done a great job of kind of leading the way. We, they've re and I'm in, going to encourage agents to be part of an accountability group that has some type of consistent meeting. Because you know what? And you guys, they get together physically, right? Once a month. Is that true, Chevelle? Yes. Okay. And in the interim... They're dialoguing all the time on a Facebook group page and all that kind of stuff, right? Okay, okay. Well, probably the problem is, yep, Newport Richie, and the group is pretty much closed, right? It's not closed. It's not closed. Okay. It's always open, but in order for you to join, you know, the, like some people want to join the Facebook group. It's an in-person group, so you have to come in person first. You know, yeah, and, and, and be, and there's no dues or anything like that. It's just consistent. But they're the ones, I don't know if you saw at the cross, did you see at the, at, the, at the holiday party a bunch of people with funky socks on? I got there too late. All right. They had their, their, they had a Christmas sock exchange, you know, right there. They decided to do it at our party because they do it. It's awesome, right? And that's the kind of camaraderie that people want and crave that that Lady Doris sure. left, right, because I couldn't provide, that they've decided, hey, look, you know what? I like the model, but let's do this little. Let's be little within big. Right? How many people do you have in your group? It's a total of 25 people all together, but. Really? Participates is about half of that. Yeah. Or you know, probably about half of 12 of us. Because I'm on, you know, again, and they have a Facebook page and they allow me in there because I, I, I rarely do I chime in. You go to the meetings. I don't go to the meetings. You've never been to a meeting. <laughs> Except they, they called yesterday, yesterday's, uh, the, yesterday's they, they've called it an unofficial meeting because, <laughs> because most of them in the, in the room were jammers, so they said it's an unofficial meeting. Um, but I don't, but I thought, I mean, again, I like to, if there's something to be done in quote unquote the name of Future on Realty, I still want to monitor and make sure, hey, look, I'm down with what's going on. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah. yep, and it'll be on uh, and email me, and I'll get you the whole uh, presentation as well. I do that. Okay. Yeah, you guys have my email address, Bob, yes. MCD, at futurehomerealty.com. All right. Cool. All right. You good? Do you want to take, snap a picture of it? You got a, a, a phone on your phone? Yeah, snap a photo of it. That, I don't think I can because of the color. Oh, okay, got it. All right. Okay, perfect. All right. Hey, yeah, just ask me. Email it to me. I can get it for you, though. Can you get it? <coughs> yeah, I'll, I'll email it. I'll text it to you. Oh, thank you. See, look at that. That's what jammers do. Oh. <laughs> Where did jam come from? It's. It started off. <laughs> As the, the people who were at the first meeting, they started off with the, the first letter of um, their birthday. So first it started to be something squared, because Janine is a math person as well. Right. And, you know, it just sort of evolved. Right. Originally, like, that might have been a January, April, March right. situation. Okay, yeah. right. right, okay. And it just evolved and became jammers. That's awesome. Love it. Love it, love it. Well, cool. You got me on the, on the last bullet, did you? What's that? You got me that's you? That's exactly your trans? Nice job. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Congratulations. That's perfect. You know, and the beauty is, too, is that, you guys, it's there for the taking, if you want it, 
right? But the work, I mean, the little red hen will tell you that no one eats bread for free. That's fine. Okay? So don't expect the bread without the work. But the key, the good news about that, though, you can look at that negatively, right? Or you can take the positive of that. Hey, the law of the harvest says, if I sow, I will, I will reap. Mm -hmm. The recipe works, right? Someone's done it ahead of me, all right? So it's all good to go. Recipe that reminds me of one last joke because I love to tell jokes. Right? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> two jokes. I just forgot to think of another one. Joseph told me the other day, but here's number one. Number one is recipe reminded me of this. This guy's walking through visiting an older uh, uh, graveyard, and on the graveyard was on, on a tombstone, larger tombstone above ground, all right? And on it <clears throat> was a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Okay? And on the grave, on the tombstone, right? On the other side, you go around, says, here lies Grandma Jones, all right? Whenever anybody asks for her recipe for her chocolate chip cookies, she always said, over my dead body. <laughs> Isn't that great? All right. Okay, and then here's the third one. Okay, we've got some Hispanic speaking. Anybody in the room? Okay, so do you hear about the Spanish magician? All right. I speak in Portuguese, but... Oh, okay, okay, all right. So maybe, okay, yeah. okay. I don't know if I'll, I'll try and... you from Brazil? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, Spanish musician, right? I don't have to speak Spanish. I'm going to say it in English so you guys are good. Spanish musician, right? Doing his thing, all right? He says, all right, for my grand finale, all right, I'm going to, on the count of three, disappear. All right? Are we ready? Listo? Okay, yes. we're ready. Okay, ready? Uno. Oh, poof. He goes away. He disappeared without a trace. <laughs> trace, T R E S. Trace is three in Spanish. Come on, that's good. Without a trace? That is awesome. <laughs> All right. Good deal. All right. I got to work my way down to Seminole. If you guys have any questions, reach out. All right. Um, I probably, if I don't see you before, have a Merry Christmas, everybody. All right. And happy holidays, whatever. Hanukkah, anybody's going Hanukkah that started last night. All, all's good. All right.